I think of it almost as a triage kind of activity. Get, get the lay of the land at super high resolution in stereo, and we're reporting that sort of initial geologic context for the first time here. I'm Jim Bell, I'm a professor here in the School of Earth and Space Exploration, and I'm the principal investigator for the MassCam-Z camera system, which is the stereo, zoomable, multicolor imagers on the NASA's Perseverance rover that we operate here at ASU. So one of the things that we're reporting in this paper is uh, many of the big 360 degree panoramas that we take with the MassCam-Z imaging system. And what they help us do is, is it gives us all on the team uh, the context, the geologic context. What is this landscape like at high resolution? What's over there? What's up in the hills? What's over there? These sand dunes and ridges and craters, rocks, all kinds of stuff all the way around us at super high resolution. We can't visit every one of those places. We can't go sample and drill in every one of those places. So for many of those places, the pictures are all we're gonna get. And we have to decide with those pictures, here's where we're going to drive. Here's where we're going to drill and sample. Here's where we're gonna bring pieces of Mars back uh, to the Earth eventually. So one of the other things that we're reporting uh, in this paper is uh, not just the big panoramas, but the individual images where we get really close. We we dial in the telephoto lenses at our maximum zoom and we look really closely at the surface and we can see the small scale texture of these rocks and other outcrops, things like that. And what we found is a lot of textures that match what we see when we go look at volcanic terrains on the earth, lava flows or uh, places where lava has come out of the ground or been erupted. And we see, for example, textures that look like uh, pahoehoe lava flows in, in the island of Hawaii or Iceland. Uh, we see places where it looks like the flows have banded around obstacles and, and swerved almost in a fluid dynamic kind of way. And this, was, this is cool to geologists to see volcanic kinds of features, but it was somewhat surprising because we're in a lake bed and we were expecting, most of us were expecting to see lake bed sediments. And they're probably there, maybe buried under these volcanic rocks. Maybe the volcanic rocks came later. Uh, and we know that there's lake sediments there because there's a giant delta right next to us that we've also taken spectacular images of. But still, you know, a bit surprising to not get exactly what we were expecting to see. But we're still excited by it and excited by the fact that we know that some of the samples we'll be bringing back are likely volcanic rocks, which means we can take them into laboratories like the labs here in CC and do absolute age dating and other all, all kinds of uh, detailed geochemistry on them. So unexpected, but exciting results. So one of the other things that we report that we can do with these cameras is that we can see beyond just human red, green, blue vision. We can see a little bit into the ultraviolet, a little bit into the infrared, and especially in the infrared, when we spin our filter wheel and look at the surface, rocks and soils and other in the sky it, in different colors, we can start to pull out information on the composition and the kinds of minerals that are there, especially iron bearing minerals. It's not a spectrometer. We've got other spectrometers on the rover that we help to support, but we can get a limited amount of information about different kinds of iron oxides, minerals, altered, oxidized, the red stuff that makes Mars red, as well as the pristine, pure volcanic minerals that you'd find in a place like Hawaii or Iceland or Northern Arizona, olivines and pyroxenes for those of you familiar with mineralogy terms. So being able to map some of these things in an image context and help guide the really detailed compositional instruments to the most exciting places is, is one of the things we can do with the cameras. Our, our cameras mostly look at the surface, but they also look at the atmosphere and the sun and the sky. Uh, and in that sense, they're part of the whole meteorology package on the rover. And we've been very fortunate on uh, Perseverance to be able to do that monitoring very rapidly and frequently compared to past missions. So we have this detailed, rich record, day by day, Sol by Sol on Mars, uh, sometimes hour by hour on certain days, uh, that lets us uh, see how much dust is in the atmosphere, how it's moving around, how it's coming and going. We see dust devils moving around in the terrain, take movies of them, uh, some of them on purpose, some of them accidentally when we're taking movies of the helicopter. And we've seen uh, even a, a, a large dust storm pass over the rover. So uh, using the cameras as part of the weather station is kind of a cool thing. We built that capability in and we have atmospheric scientists who work with us 
on the camera team. And this is useful for understanding what Mars is like today, but it's going to be super useful for people going to Mars in the decades ahead, because they're going to need to know what the weather is like, what are the patterns that they can expect, when is it going to be dusty, when is it going to be clear and cloudy. Uh, that's going to be part of their sort of everyday weather outlook and forecasting, just like you know, using satellite data is for us here on Earth. And so the, the last thing we report uh, in this paper is how we provide, the MassCAMZ team provides a lot of engineering support for the rover and for the Ingenuity helicopter. Everybody remembers the first helicopter flights on Mars in uh, April of 2021, first powered flight on, on another planet. And the team here in Mission Operations was heavily involved in planning uh, for those, the movies that we took of the Ingenuity helicopter flights and doing the processing and putting the movies together and sharing them with the public. Super exciting time. Really, you know, aviation history in the making and we were just delighted to be able to support that and report it here in this paper. But there's also some cool science that goes on behind that because we notice, and you can see this in the movies that we put online with the paper, you can see the helicopter lifting dust as it's taking off. In one, one movie, it leaves the field and comes back, and it's bringing this big cloud of dust with it as it's coming back. And so our atmospheric science colleagues are turning this into a dynamic experiment using the helicopter as a, a known dust lifting source to understand how dust moves around. So that's partly engineering support. We take pictures of the cores that we're collecting that we'll have back on the Earth, hopefully in a decade or so. Uh, with the MassCAMZ cameras and document the details of the very small scale grains that are in those cores. I mean, they're only like the size of your pinky. And so we're getting this high resolution view looking at the details of those cores. And that's helping us choose which ones to put down on the ground where and eventually bring back uh, to the earth. And then the rover drivers and arm operators and others are, are constantly asking uh, our team and others to, hey, could you take some pictures of these components for us or this system needs some diagnostics? And we are just delighted to be able to support the engineers in uh, helping, uh, helping this mission stay healthy and, and move forward. So we, re we report some of those observations in this paper as well.